Okay, so um, we're here at Nova. We finally got to Nova um, with uh, Philip Medicus. And uh, we finally managed to track him down to talk about the Mentor 4. Um, new at Nova. We've only just found out about it. Um, to be honest, it was quite a big surprise for us because we sell the Mentor 3 and it's a very, very popular glider. Um, but it's still quite young. It's uh, only come out uh, maybe a year and a half ago, maybe two years tops. And we're used to Nova having a, maybe a three-year cycle on the gliders. So can you tell us a little bit about why you s decided to surprise everybody with the Mentor 4? Yeah. Uh, maybe the solo? Yeah. Actually, uh, in the Mentor class, we always try to keep a two-year product cycle. But normally we fail and it takes a little longer. So there were about 2.5 years between Mentor 1 and Mentor 2. And I think it was quite the same between Mentor 2 and Mentor 3. And this time the plan was, like always, to keep the two-year product cycle and this time it worked. Okay. That, yeah, why we finished yeah. earlier. It's earlier than yeah. what we used to, but it's Exa your plan. Exactly, but it's, our plan hasn't changed since the Mentor 1. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what is particularly new about the 4? If, if a pilot is on a 3, what will, what will they feel differently on the 4? Uh, what the pilot feels, I mean, performance is difficult to feel, at least after one flight, but the performance difference is one main difference. We gained half a glide ratio and uh, a little bit more top speed on the Mentor 4. And what the pilot might feel before is a little bit more roll stability. We got the feedback from some of our team pilots that they'd like a bit more roll stability, especially on speed bar. And we have done that on the Mentor 4, so it flies a bit mm, with a little bit more roll stability and directional stability. Okay, has yeah. this affected the thermaling turn? Because the 3 is quite, you know, it's quite easy and uh, I remember doing a review and I could maybe mm -hmm. tie the glider, the brake line off and, and just let it go around. It's a very controlled turn. That uh, seems to me that you know, it, if you make more roll stability, it, it maybe makes the turning harder. Yeah, of course, it's it's difficult. If it's difficult to find that balance, if you if you increase roll stability, you have to improve the handling to keep the handling the same, yeah. kind of. But the handling and the turning behavior feels very close to the Mentor Three. So a Mentor Three pilot will immediately feel familiar. Maybe the uh, the the force on the brake got a little bit higher, therefore you have a little bit less brake travel. It feels that the handling behavior feels really familiar. Okay, yeah. and still the very uh, big stall resistance yeah, yeah, of the three. Yeah, because this the, was a real strong point. Yeah, symmetrically and asymmetrically the brake travel stayed similar. So the handling characteristic is really familiar. A Mentor three pilot will feel a difference, but it's not a huge difference. Yeah. Um, I've, I've talked to a few designers here at the show, um, I've asked them the same kind of question and it's very difficult to get a, an answer out, maybe you can help. When you have a good glider like a Mentor 3, how do you start to improve it because you've already gone to the maximum of your materials, the design, your ideas, how do you take a wing like that and then improve? Where do, you, where do you start? I mean, there must be a limit that you reach at some point. Actually, it's kind of a constant process. The, the way that at the moment a wing is finished, normally you already have ideas to improve it. Okay. So you have to, I mean, you have to, you, you can't infinitely develop a wing, so you have to, at a certain point, release it. But it doesn't mean you don't have ideas of how to improve it. And that was the same with the development of the Mentor 4. There were ideas how to improve the Mentor 3 already when it was certified. And since then we've developed other wings like the Triton or the Ion 3. And the things you learn from this on these other gliders can often be implemented in a new wing, so it's a constant process. You mentioned the Triton 2. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit about that wing? We know very little about the wing. We haven't yet uh, had a demo to fly. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so all we can see is a photograph of a higher spec ratio wing uh, built for performance. Um, is this significantly different to the Triton, the first one? And where where are you aiming? Is this is this for pilots that used to fly in the D class or easy C? Where is it in, in the range? I mean, uh, in terms of demands on the pilots, it's there's no difference to the Triton one. We aim to the exact same uh, target group, and I think we've reached the goal. So that's why we also didn't increase the aspect ratio. It's the same as on the Triton one. And so the demand on the pilot stayed the same. That's actually what we try with all our gliders. Also in the Mentor class, we the Mentor 4 is aimed towards the same target group as the Mentor 1, and Mentor 2 and Mentor 3 were the same. Yeah. We like the idea to keep the target group the same. Yeah. Okay, and is the, is the Triton 2 as far as Nova is going to go? Up towards the CCC, are you ever going to be involved in uh, competitions again? It's. I don't know if we are ever. I wouldn't say we are never going to be involved. But at yeah. the moment, at the moment, the competition class is not really interesting for us. Maybe, maybe two liners are interesting for us in the future. That's just to experiment. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That's that's what we do. We want to gain some knowledge there. Uh, but not with the goal of competing in, uh, yeah, of building a competition class glider. Okay. Yeah. So you've got a new C, new high B. Where's the next focus? Can you uh, say anything about the direction? Oh, I don't really want to talk about future projects because for us it the makes secret. for us it makes more sense to to release a glider or to announce a glider when it's finished because otherwise we put pressure on ourselves. If I tell you we develop a high-end E&D wing, everybody would wait for it and we would just put pressure on ourselves. So, not really, but we have a couple of prototypes flying around. Some look more promising than the other and uh, more promising will lead to a ser to serial glider soon, yeah. What goes into making the different sizes of, of, a, of a different glider? Say for example the, the Triton 2 or the Mentor 4? Uh, the small Mentor 4 sizes are not finished yet, so it's maybe better to talk about the small Triton 2 sizes okay, as they yeah. are finished. Uh, on the Triton 2, the, M and the, uh, the medium and the large are almost identical wings. So we had the medium and just scale it to a bigger version. That's what we normally do when we have an M, uh, if you want the N large. Yeah. If you go smaller, it's normally not that easy. We, we tried it on the Triton because it makes sense trying, but it didn't work. So that just scaling down the M didn't work. It was a bit too aggressive in some maneuvers and we had uh, slight problems. So we had to build another proto with slight changes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's only slight changes. You change the curvature a little bit. You change the trim slightly. In some cases, we even do some changes on the airfoil. Mm -hmm. And it's always harder to build light wings, uh, small wings, small, small wings, wings than yeah. bigger ones. Yeah. So we, are, we never had problems with large wings in terms of uh, certification, yeah. but with S, XS, XXS, that's yeah. often the case. So sometimes you have to change quite some parameters. Yeah. So an important point is that uh, so you don't just scale the wings up and down, you actually yeah. then work on each wing yeah. to make sure yeah. that every, yeah. every size is, yeah. is worked yeah. out nice. Which yeah. is, which I think a lot of pilots don't realize how much work that is, so it's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, for the, the, the very small sizes are a lot of work. That's, for example, why we didn't uh, build and certify, or why we didn't certify the Triton 2 XS. Right. Because it, we built a prototype, but it looked like a lot of work and it wouldn't have paid off. Yeah. Okay. We look forward to seeing what, what comes out new and uh, in the meantime I'm looking forward to flying the Mentor 4 and the Triton 2 and cool. seeing yeah. how they perform. So have nice flights with them. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time Philip. You're it's welcome. Great, great finding out more about the background behind those. Cheers. <laughs>